Okay, we're going to be analyzing the secondary prompts for NYU Grossman School of Medicine. This is a really popular medical school among applicants, not only because it's highly ranked, but also because it's free for all admitted students. Who doesn't love free tuition? And along with that free tuition, of course, comes a wildly low acceptance rate of around 2.5%. In this video, we're going to go over some of the key elements you should aim to include in your responses to boost your chances of being among that 2.5%. A quick note before we get started, we'll be referring to NYU School of Medicine's 2024 to 25 prompts in this video because they're the most recent ones available at the time of this recording. If they happen to change, we'll update our website resources. And as you prepare to work on your secondary essays, if you're looking for more in-depth writing strategies, we recommend checking out our YouTube series on the essay writing process for each of the six main secondary prompt categories like diversity and adversity essays. Also, our secondary essay library has sample essays for each of these NYU med prompts, as well as for every other prompt required by U.S. and Canadian med schools. There are over 1,500 essays altogether. Okay. Let's take a look at the first prompt from NYU. So it reads, if applicable, please comment on significant fluctuations in your academic record, which are not explained elsewhere on your application. There is no word or character limit for your response to this prompt. So it's important to establish right off the bat what they mean by significant fluctuations. Although they don't give us an exact definition, we can safely assume that they aren't concerned about a couple of Bs here and there. If you're still unsure about whether you should answer this prompt though, you should know that in the most recent available admission stats for Grossman, the median GPA was 3.98 and the median MCAT was 523. So that's a pretty high bar. Now, if you're hovering closer to the lower end of that range and you haven't had a chance to explain your academic record anywhere else on your application, you should probably take the opportunity to respond to this prompt. Your response can be as brief or as detailed as you want it to be, but try to stick to the main objective. Explain the circumstances surrounding your low grades, then describe what actions you took and choices you made to recover. You should be honest and try to avoid placing blame or making unreasonable excuses. Add comments know that everyone has low points. And if you can show them how you handled the difficult situation and grew from it, they're more likely to trust that you're equipped to handle the rigors of med school. Okay, the next prompt reads, if you have taken any time off from your studies, either during or after college, please describe what you have been doing during this time and your reasons for doing so. There's no word or character limit on this one either. So this one is partially a gap year prompt, but it also asks about pauses in the middle of your undergrad studies. You should answer this question if either or both of those things apply to you. Be straightforward, but don't feel the need to over explain or rationalize the circumstances surrounding your time off. And above all, put a positive spin on things. So gap years and educational breaks aren't inherently bad. They can actually be periods of a lot of growth for many med school applicants. But even if you took a break because of less than ideal circumstances like illness, financial trouble, or other personal difficulties, don't worry that it will automatically reflect poorly on your application. So adcoms don't expect applicants to be perfect. So if you can clearly and authentically describe what you learned during your time off, how you made the most of that time, and how it's shaped you into the person you are today, you'll still be putting your best foot forward. In either case, you should describe any and all jobs, family responsibilities, volunteering, and maybe even hobbies that you participated in during your time away from school. Even if they aren't directly related to medicine, they can still demonstrate you know, skills like interpersonal leadership and communication skills that are really important in the medical field. Okay, the third prompt reads, the admissions committee holistically evaluates a range of student qualities and life experiences that complement demonstrated academic excellence. What unique qualities do you possess that make you uniquely suited to become a physician or a physician scientist? How have your individual lived experiences shaped your core values and desire to be a future leader in your profession? They give you a limit of 2,500 characters for this response. Okay, this prompt gives you an opportunity to really highlight why you chose medicine and what kind of physician you aim to become. But the language is also pretty tense. So let's break it down and paraphrase to clarify what adcoms are asking you to share in your response. So in other words, they're saying, we're looking beyond GPA and MCAT scores alone here. Tell us which of your unique qualities will make you a great future physician or physician scientist and explain why. Also describe what life experiences outside of the classroom have shaped your core values and your desire to make an impact on the future of medicine. So for your response to the first portion of the prompt, you don't wanna just rattle off 
you know, a list of adjectives describing your best qualities, be sure to show them how you've demonstrated those qualities through specific actions or choices. Otherwise, uh, how should they know whether they agree with your self-assessment? And then similarly, when it comes to the second portion of the prompt, make sure you don't just gloss over the life experiences they're asking you to write about. It's best to get as specific as possible. So think of it sort of like your physician origin story. What are a couple of memorable life experiences that served as catalysts, catalysts excuse me, for the formation of your values and your desire to be, in their words, a future leader in the medical field? Tell those stories using as much detail as you can. Also, a quick note to wrap up this one. Uh, this prompt is somewhat similar to the AMCAS personal statement prompt, so be careful not to just repeat stories and ideas from your personal statement essay. It's fine if you mention some of the same life experiences in both essays, as long as you add new context here. All right. Now, in the past, prompt four was a sort of choose your own adventure situation. But starting with the 2024 to 2025 admission cycle, applicants are now required to reply to all three parts of the prompt. Your character limit for each of the following prompts is 2,500, so that's 7,500 characters total. The prompt reads, the most meaningful achievements are often non-academic in nature. Describe the personal accomplishment that makes you most proud. Why is this important to you? Number two, conflicts arise daily from differences in perspectives, priorities, worldviews, and traditions. How do you define respect? Describe a situation in which you found it challenging to remain respectful while facing differences. Number three, describe a situation in which working with a colleague, family member, or friend has been challenging. How did you resolve, if at all, the situation as a team? And what did you gain from the experience that will benefit you as a future healthcare provider? So part one gives you a chance to demonstrate your accomplishments as well as your values. Outside of your GPA, test scores, research publications, internships, etc., What's something else that you care deeply about and are really proud of in your life? The best responses here are probably going to demonstrate that the applicant possesses one or more of the AAMC's official pre-med competencies for entering medical students, which include things like cultural awareness and humility, empathy and compassion, reliability and dependability, resilience and adaptability, and interpersonal skills and oral communication. And then parts two and three are actually pretty similar to each other. They draw on some of the same themes that a lot of diversity prompts present. Although they're asking slightly different things, you can approach both of them from a similar angle. So in your answer to both of these questions, adcoms want to know how you've handled conflicts or differences of opinion in your life so far. And they specifically want to know how you've demonstrated some of those AMC core competencies. For part two, we recommend you also answer the final question in part three's prompt. What did you gain from the experience that will benefit you as a future healthcare provider? This way you can show not only how you responded to the challenging situation in the moment, but also what new perspective or skill you took away and how you'll apply it in the future. However, be sure that you write about two different experiences in your answers to parts two and three. Don't reiterate the same stories or ideas. Try to choose two different life experiences that display different facets of your personality or perspective. For example, in part two, you might want to write about working on a research team. Uh, but in part three, you might want to write about working closely with friends to solve an interpersonal conflict. All right, that's the last of the questions for NYU Grossman. Uh, we hope you find it helpful as you prepare to write your secondaries for NYU. And if you're looking for sample essays for each of these prompts or sample essays for literally every prompt required by med schools in the US and Canada, check out our secondary essay premium example hub. We've got over 1,500 essays in total. Take care.